Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nock. Welcome back to Soccer Band the RPG, and I messed up. So, after the last episode and I ran out of time, I was like, hey, let's do what Mike suggested and we'll um, skip ahead to the next save spot. So I did, but the next save spot is actually a area of the house and a riddle. So I can't actually go back now at the moment to do those other two um, puzzles. That, uh, that there's two more puzzles basically one after the one I was stuck on for the last few episodes um, so we're going to do things a little bit out of order here so we're going to do the house and the riddle and hopefully and then we'll go back and we'll tackle the, the other puzzles um, I have an idea something I hadn't tried before for the one that we've been previously stuck on so we'll see how that one pans out and what we can do um, but yeah anyway we've got more story so Hello, it's good to see you. Could I ask you of you one more favour? Sure, Dad. What is it? I wouldn't want Rosan Rosanna here tonight whilst we're hosting a party. She's still so young. I I understand. The noise may be most upsetting for her. Exactly. Yes, that's it. So could you please be so kind to escort her to the neighbour's house? She spent the night there before. No problem. I'll get to it right away. I thank you for your assistance. Okay. So we're going to go to her bedroom. Which I think is the last door. Uh, oh no, this is the bathroom. So, I mustn't go to the basement right now. I find it very odd that you can, um, that the basement is in the bathroom. Oh, that's right, I have to go upstairs. That's where I'm getting confused. It is the last door, I think, but just upstairs. Nope. That's my room. Her door, bedroom door is locked, and she doesn't have a key for her own bedroom. Tom likes his privacy more than anyone. So, that's interesting. Um, so, is Tom the person who we've been seeing in the puzzles? Is that our brother? Interesting. Yeah, back of potatoes in your bedroom. Weirdly. Hey, Rosanna. How's it going? Hey, Lewis, I'm fine. I'm just messing around a bit. What brings you into my room? Dad is throwing another party tonight. He thought it'd better if you... Yeah, I know. He wants me to get a good rest tonight, so I'll have to stay at the neighbor's place, I guess. Yes, that's it. So grab all your stuff, and I think we'll need... And I will think... And if you think you're done, meet me downstairs. Hold on, sis. I'm pretty good at this. Just wait for a second. All set. Really? That was impressive. Are you sure you didn't forget something? The full 100%. Well, okay then, follow me. I'll take you to the place. All right. Nice, joyful, happy music. So, we're gonna take our sister to the neighbor's house. Ah, good to see you two together. Hi, Dad. Ready for the neighbor's place. Very well. I'll see you soon. Hey, Mom. Uh, you two are sure going to are surely going to the neighbor's place. Yes, he's very kind. I know he is a good man. Come on, Rosanna. We don't have all day. Actually, we do because the longer we like stay in this a little bit, the, the less time I have to spend in puzzles. So let's go and take to the neighbor's place. Neighbor's house. Hello, Mr. Hardy. Yes. It's me, Lewis. I'm bringing Rosanna to stay for the night. I assume my farmer communicated this beforehand. Yes, that's right. I'm coming. Hold on. How's it going, you two? I'm fine, thanks. I'm doing great. How about you, Mr. Hardy? I'm doing terrifically well, dear. So, your father is hosting another party tonight, huh? Yep. They seem to follow each other up in increasing roughly succession. Rosanna, why don't you go ahead inside? Make us some tea. Then we can discuss what we've been up to over the past couple of weeks. And I might still have cookies laying around somewhere. I'll get right to it. Bye, Roz. See you tomorrow. Bye, sis. I love how, like... I, I love how, like, he, he she's going to his house, yet... He tells her to go inside and make tea. That's great. Now for real, though, Lewis. How have you been holding up with all your duties lately? I, I, um... I don't really know. I just must... As long as you remember that there's nothing to be ashamed of. Don't let the kids at school get you. Get you. Just stay strong. Thanks. I'll try. 
Sometimes sacrifices ought to be made in order to achieve a higher goal. However, it's justified to do so is, of course, a whole other story. Is this still there? What are you chatting about? Oh, um, nothing really. I was just telling your sister that should the kids at school ever try to pick on her again, she should just, um, you should just try to fight them off. Don't let people near you who try to hurt you. That would be foolish. Wouldn't you agree? All right. I fully agree. Hey, we're in the bathroom. Look at this. And we got Mr. Riddle Man. Riddle Man. Seems like our bathroom, but it's like a variation. Interesting. Here I am, once more. It's a pleasure, as always. Let's just get down to business as soon as possible, shan't we? I know that this guy is highly dangerous, and getting killed or whatever at this stage wouldn't be at all advantageous. If that is what you desire, very well, allow me to explain. A few hours ago, a sports event came to a close. Four teams competed against each other, each team playing exactly once against every other team. Let's get the pen and paper out. Uh, okay. So, we have four teams playing each other once. Okay, so one versus two, one versus three, one versus four, two versus three, two versus four, three versus four. That's six games, right? Six games, eight teams. Yeah, okay. That's six. Hence, all the teams played three matches. And because of the constraints, these were divided into three different rounds. This way, during every round, all four teams were playing in two simultaneous matches. Not a single match ended in a tie. Okay. So no match was tied. What on earth are you talking about? The teams were well matched. None of them managed to win all matches, and none suffered the unthinkable fate of losing them all. Alright, so every match was won, but everybody won at least one match. It is known that Team A succeeded in winning its first and third matches. Okay, so A won one and three, and C won one. Okay, so we know A and C were in separate matches on round one. Lastly, Team D unfortunately came to a little came a little too short in its second match, and so lost. Okay, well we know that A won matches one and three, so. What we also know is Team A lost their second match, as did Team D. Apologies for that delay. So yeah, um, so I know, okay, so in round one, Team A and C won. In round two, Team A and D lost. And in round three at the moment, all I know is that Team A won. Okay. In this room, there are five young gentlemen you may or may not recognize from before. They all went out to watch the games and they have come to here to share their thoughts with you. But remember, only one of them speaks the truth. Given the information I provided, please identify whose claim is true and then tell me. Then I'll provide you with the key to exit. Understood? Good luck. All right, so. Let's speak to people. Hi there, I'm guy number one. Which moment stood out the most? When B lost to A, of course. Okay, so B lost to A. It's guy one, two, three, four, five. So that would, in, if he was telling the truth, then that would mean that would have to be match two. Okay. Well, who do we have here? I'm guy number two. It was cool to see the showdown between A and B in the first round. 
okay? That could be true. I'm the third guy, and I've been a lifelong supporter of B. I can only reveal in the... Revel, sorry, in the fact that B won against C. So that would have to be... That would have to be match three that I've got written here. Because... We know that A and C won matches one, A and D lost matches two, and only that A won match three. So we'd, it'd have to be match three, that one would be. Remember when B beat D? Amazing. So that could be either two or three at the minute from my information. And finally, legendary how A defeated C. So A defeating C could only be match three. So after speaking to everybody, that doesn't really help. That gives me no further insight at all. So here's what I have. According to the people, um, B lost to A. Hold on, match two. What did he say again? No, B lost to A, so that had to be match one or three. You see, there's only one guy out of all of those guys, there's only one guy who There's only one guy who could be talking about match two. He's talking about match three. Hold on, so if he's talking about match three. So hold on, if that was that B, B, C, that would be D. Okay, so let's, let's just work on, on this guys in a minute. So that would make match three, A versus D, B versus C. Then, using that information, can't be B. I'm trying to think if I can fill in the blanks at all using that information. Because nobody lost all three matches. Hold on, hold on. Nobody lost all three matches, so that means in the final match, D had to win. Because D can't win in match one because A and C won. They can't win in match two because A and D lost. And then A won 
in match three. So, okay, so D have got to have won there. So then B, B has to win in match two, but did they beat A or did they beat D? Now, one of the guys did say that B beat D. which is guy number four. Now, guy number four is the only one who says something that could have happened in match two, which is what I was kind of thinking may actually be the, the right way to go about things here. So let's, let's go on the assumption that B beat D in match two. That would mean that C beat A. So, what I've got is, match one was A versus D and C versus B. Match two was C versus A, B versus D. Match three was A versus B, D versus C. I've done them in the, in the order, so the first team is the winner, the last team is the loser. Okay, so, let's check through their things. B lost to A. Well, B did lose to A. So that one is correct. A beat B in round one would not be correct. B beat C in match three. That's not right. B beat D, that one would be correct. And A beat C is incorrect. But so, okay, so that leaves me with two possible that leaves me with two possible right ones, which obviously that's not right. B lost to A or B beat D. So if we change these round, that would be B and that would be C. So then that makes that B and that one will be C. Okay, so now that gives me, just to go through and through these again, A versus D, C versus B, B versus A, C versus D, A versus C, D versus B. So B lost to A in round one. Oh no, B lost to A. No, that one is now incorrect. A versus B in round one, still correct, incorrect. B beat C, incorrect. B beat D, that's incorrect. A beat C. So with that, that solution, guy five is telling the truth. That A beat C. So let's go with that. Let's double check what he said. And then I think I'm gonna go with this, guy five. All right, so guy five is telling the truth, I hope. Woo! Second time of like running that through, but yeah. The key, the key thing that I got there was in match five i realized that it had to be a and d that won that won because um it did clearly say that everybody won at least one game and that's the only place that they could have won a game and that was kind of key so then it was just a matter of like flipping around b and c in that second match which kind of like resolved that um issue here is the key as promised the man handed you the bathroom key now please leave don't worry i will Leave. Let's see if this key works. You turn the key and the lock opened. 
When it's raining, the worms still come to surface from deep underground. They leave behind the dark, everlasting dirt and venture into broad daylight. To what end, I don't know. But the fact that they are that they do remains remains. They're not like birds. The rain vic victoriously sends them into a collective hiding until there is not a single one out to be seen. Again, where they go, I do not know. But the fact that they disappear remains. The worms, king of the underground, the birds, rulers of the vast and extending skies, two species destined to never cross paths. Yet they do. When the rains have ceased, the aerial creatures strike down and touch the thin border that separates their world from that of worms. They mockingly trample grass, imitating the sound of raindrops, trickling the small brain, tricking the small-brained worms into surfacing. Birds have the advantage of wit and wisdom. The worms get eaten and die. Not all life was created equal. Some are born with the ability to reason. Others just follow orders and do as they should. Some were born into in a mansion, others under an overpass or in the back of a cab, unwanted, abandoned, discarded. Some were born to rule, others to obey. Some were born to create, others to consume. I don't know what I was born for, and I don't, I don't want to know either. For when I do, I won't be able to control my actions. I would attempt to defy. I would try to escape. Escape from, I don't really know what. How kind of you to show, Lewis. My mother forced me to go. I'm still of the opinion that I can dispense with your help. It's up to the patient to decide whether they are helped or not. Help is not something you can receive against your will. I'm completely healthy. Hold on, wait. Is this key guy? Is the riddle guy some sort of doctor? You are really, though. Yes, of course. Why wouldn't I be? Tell me, Lewis, how often can you remember your dreams? I'm not really a dreamer. Sorry. Is that really so? That's most remarkable for your... For your mother told me that for the past week you have been... You talked to my mother? Of course, dear. I want to discuss progress with my clients. The last time I was on the phone with your mother, she told me this one. Fascinating detail. Well, it wasn't just a detail, to be frank. What she'd been saying? Well, she confided to me that over the past month or so, you developed the rather uncanny habit of waking up each night with a loud scream. Though before any of your relatives can reach you, you appear to be fast asleep again, and no signs of trouble appear present. I do that? I'm afraid so. And it wouldn't be like your mother to lie to me. She sounded concerned and therefore asked me to change, asked me to have a good talk with you for a change. As she seemed to have lost for words at the moment, I shall take this opportunity to apologise for bringing this news so abruptly and bluntly as I did. It amazed me that you appear to have no recollection of the events whatsoever. This has kept me thinking for the past few days. You see, when we first met, your mother explained to me that the reason for our meeting originates from your frequent encounters with bullies at your school. According to your mother, things aren't really improving, and she claims that you've suffered both physically and mentally from the frequent ambushes. Your mother is concerned about you, and that is a good thing, and I want you to realise that. Though rather unexpectedly, things seem to have taken a turn for the worse lately. Furthermore, it's your symptoms that really baffle me. The sudden outbursts of emotion that your mother describes to me, and the accompanied memory loss. They suggest some great trauma, suffering or agony you've had to endure for a substantial period of time, but that you've locked away deep as if not to recognise, no, acknowledge, the severity of the situation. Such street torments are quite rare, as most people would address the issue timely, though some keep it all inside, where they think it can't hurt them. Such people appear completely normal on the outside, but they are a wound spring on the inside, ready to snap at any instant. I can transform these people in an irreparable manner. Once a rope has snapped, there is no reattaching the two ends like they once were. Given the fact that the bullying you suffer on a daily basis is something we've talked about a lot, and you and your mother, I do not suspect that to be the cause for all of this agony, this pain that swells inside of you. I'm concerned, Lewis. I really am. I want to help you, Lewis. You have to believe me when I claim that I, I can, that I can. You have to accept my aid, will you? Please tell me, Lewis. What has changed in the past month? What or what has been hurting you all this time? You. You've been giving me these riddles. My... My father has been throwing a lot of parties lately. Ooh, look at this. Where am I now? It's so warm. I love it. So now I'm at a beach, beach huh? I couldn't have, have borne the cold for much longer. I've never borne the cold for... So you won't hear me complain. Maybe I can take it easy for a while solving these puzzles while enjoying the heat of the sun. Honestly... Honestly, it doesn't sound like too bad of a time. I got to be out of a disgusting old derelict building as well. It still baffles me how many of those people might have 
patiently waited for my arrival for hours. Truthfully, it kind of creeps me out. All right, so we made it to a desert. Huzzah! I wonder what the doggish like construction is doing out here. Okay, so we have made it back. We've got a save point. We solved the riddle. In the next episode, we'll be going back to the previous puzzles. We have two puzzles in the snow area still to solve, so we're going to be working on those. Thank you very much, though, guys, for tuning in. I appreciate it, as always. We'll be back with another episode of Soccer Band, the RPG, real soon. But until then, I've been Nock. You've been awesome. See ya.